Okay, so we have two fractions here, and the question is, which one is smaller? So we have 1 over 2 cubed, and we have 1 over 4 squared. So not only are these fractions, but we have these interesting uh, denominators that have powers in them. And uh, oftentimes, students, when they're comparing fractions, it's a little confusing to figure out which one is bigger or which one is smaller. So we're going to use this little example to hopefully uh, clarify this for anyone who might be a little bit confused about this, and quite a few people actually are. Okay, but it's very important that you know how to compare uh, fractions to determine which is the smaller and which is the larger value. So we're going to do this little problem here in a second. Of course, I always encourage all of you that um, have watched my videos in the past, so thank you very much if you have. Uh, but to pause the video and use this as a little pop quiz, check your understanding. Of course, I'm going to walk through this step by step in just one second. But uh, first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher, and over several years I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online math help programs there is. That's a pretty bold statement. Of course, I'll let you be the judge of that. If you're interested, you can check out my math help program by following the link in the description of this video. But basically, I have uh, 100 plus different math courses ranging from pre-algebra, Algebra 1, Geometry, Algebra 2. I'm going to be launching pre-calculus here in about a week. Very excited about that. I love to teach advanced math. So if you're taking that level of mathematics in about a week, I'm going to have my awesome new pre-calculus course out there. But I also um, have a ton of courses in the area of test preparation. So if you're studying for the GED, SAT, um, ACT, GRE, GMAT, ASVAB, AccuPlacer, Alex exam, maybe the CLEP exam, maybe a teacher certification exam, and many other type of exams. I likely have your exam because all those exams have math on them. Okay, and if you don't do well in the math section, you do not do well on the exam. So I can help you out. Uh, just go to my site, check out my full course catalog. If I don't have your exam, drop me a line and I'll help you out the best I can. Um, I also do a lot with homeschooling. So if you homeschool, I have a great homeschool learning system. And then obviously help those of you who are having a tough time in your current math courses. Now, if you're truly serious about wanting to improve in math, and if you're not serious, just disregard this. But if you are serious, then you got to be serious about this, and that is your notes. Okay, so I've been teaching mathematics for decades. One thing I could point to with consistency over all those years is that those students who take the effort to have awesome math notes almost always do extremely well, and the reverse is true. Those students who are like, mm, yeah, notes are not important. What I really need to be doing in class is checking my cell phone, talking to my friends, and then I love to use uh, math class as my time to catch up on my homework that's due the next class. Okay, so listen, all these things <laughs> I did way back in the good old 1980s, except for the cell phone part. If I had a cell phone back then, I was already distracted enough. I probably wouldn't have graduated. So listen, if you are distracted, even in the slightest, it's going to take away from your, uh, your ability to be extremely successful in mathematics. So do the right thing, and that is to stay fully engaged all the time taking great math notes. Okay, the key to success in anything is your ability to focus. If you can focus, you're going to be successful, and note-taking is that one activity in mathematics, or in any actually uh, academic setting, that is going to keep you focused. Now, as you're improving in your notes, you can use my notes. Uh, so those would include uh, pre-algebra, algebra 1, geometry, algebra 2, and trigonometry. You can find the links to those notes in the description of this video. All right, so here we go. We got 1 over 2 cubed, and we're comparing it to 1 over 4 squared, which is smaller. If you want to pause the video to go ahead and determine that uh, before you see my answer, okay, or the answer, how I'm going to explain it, go ahead and do that now because I'm going to get into the solution right now. Okay, so first of all, we have 1 over 2 cubed and 1 over 4 squared. It's probably a good idea to figure out what these actual values are. So 2 cubed means 2 times 2 times 2. So 1 over 2 times 2 times 2, 2 times 2 times 2. That's a lot of 2s, right? That is 8. So we have 1 8. So this guy right here, this fraction, is actually the fraction 1 over 8, or 1 8th. Now let's go ahead and take a look at 1 over 4 squared. So that is what? 4 times 4. Uh, of course, 4 times 4 is 16. So we have 1 8th and 1 16th. Now, what I've found is that a lot of students will be like, okay, which one is smaller? You know, our, our eyes kind of like 
you know, they might say, oh, this one, this is uh, eight. And, you know, you're kind of comparing maybe these numbers, but you don't really know with fractions, it gets confusing. It's like, which one is smaller, which one's bigger? And uh, oftentimes students, you know, make mistakes here. So let's go ahead and look at this now this way. All right, so we have our fraction, one over two cubed. We know it's one eighth and we have um, one over four squared. We know it is one sixteenth. Okay, so what is the smaller number? What is the smaller value and why? Okay, well, if I, I told you to put one of these symbols uh, in, in the right here, okay, let's make this like a little pop quiz. Which one of these symbols would you put? Okay, hopefully you decided this, okay? One eighth is actually greater than one sixteenth. Now, a lot of students will be like, uh, how can this number be greater than this number? This number, they're kind of looking at the denominators only, okay? And, are, and this is why this can be confusing with fractions. But in fact, one eighth is a greater value than one sixteenth. Now, if you knew that, then I must give you your uh, nice little math, happy face, and a little A plus. And I'll give you two stars because this is not too difficult of a problem. But let's go ahead and explain this further. Okay, why is one eighth greater than one sixteenth? Well, we can't really see this as clear when the denominators are the same. So it's probably a good idea to uh, rewrite these fractions such that they have the same denominator. So the easiest way to do that is to kind of switch this one eighth. If I multiply this by two, it becomes 16, okay, the same as this 16 over here. But if I multiply the denominator by two, I have to multiply the numerator by two. So here I have the fraction 2 sixteenths. 2 sixteenths is the same thing as the fraction 1 eighth. Okay, I just wrote it differently. Now I can compare it easily to this 1 sixteenth, and now you say, oh, okay, which one, which is uh, uh, bigger, okay? Well, if I have 2 sixteenths, that's more than having just one sixteenth. Okay, so this is bigger, which means this is smaller. Okay, so which is the smaller value? The one sixteenth is a smaller value. So hopefully you got that right, and hopefully, you know, I was able to kind of explain this in a way that you understand. Okay, so remember when you're dealing with fractions, you need to, um, you know, you got to compare uh, the fractions when you have, when you can write them when the denominators are the same. And that means that you're going to have to kind of do some of that stuff like what you uh, kind of like when you're dealing with fractions with the LCD, you know, switching things around. Let's just kind of quickly do one fast example. So if I have one or sorry, three fifths and one half, OK, here to be able to compare these two numbers, what am I going to, um, you know, do? Well, I, how do I write both of these such that they have the same denominator? Well, this is the LCD concept, right? In this case, it is 10. So I'd have to multiply this by 2 and this by 5. Now the denominators would be both 10, and I could compare this. But if I multiply the bottom number by 5, I'm going to have to multiply this top number, the numerator, by 5. And here I would have to multiply the numerator by 2. Okay, So this kind of leads us into the topic of LCD, which I have a good amount of videos on if you're confused about the LCD, and so many people are, okay? So um, if this is like, yeah, I really need to do some reviews on fractions, well, then you're in the right place. What you need to do is check out all my fraction videos in my pre-algebra playlist, and you'll become a fraction master. You'll be like, um, you know, like a world champion in fraction operations, okay? And you need to be because fractions are everywhere in mathematics. Okay, so let's go and wrap it up here. So if this uh, little video was helpful in some way, please consider smashing that like button. That's uh, very helpful for me. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, uh, please consider subscribing. I've been on YouTube for 10 plus years, have over a thousand plus uh, math videos, basic to advanced. So if you like my teaching style, please take advantage of the videos that I have and the videos that I will be posting. But my best math help will be within my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.